We are at Kyle's Landing on the Buffalo River in Arkansas. And we are here to do some camping and some hiking. We'll probably hike Eye of the Needle tomorrow. We brought our four-year-old and our 14-month-old and gonna see what all we can do with them and have fun. All right, we're at Kyle's Landing, getting ready to take off for the Eye of the Needle hike up Indian Creek. Um, I think the girls and the kids are gonna stick with us for as long as they can, but it's rated as a hard hike, so um, I don't know if they'll make it the whole way, but we'll give as good a directions as we can and kind of document the hike. Oh, are you ready to go hiking? We um, are just now leaving camp at Kyle's Landing. We're gonna go towards Steel Creek, um, and when we kind of hit the river, we're gonna branch off to the left and go up Indian Creek and head up to the Eye of the Needle. I think, little man. Yeah. Yeah. We're 15 total minutes in, about, and we're gonna take another left and continue on the Buffalo River Trail. Buffalo River Trail, Steel Creek. Boom. We haven't walked much farther, and here's another one that continues the Buffalo River Trail, but we're gonna break off. This is a very maintained trail, the buffalo is. Um, we're gonna go on a little bit more primitive one and it says Indian Creek on this side. And that's where we're gonna go. So we're still on a, it's still an easy hike, very similar to the buffalo trail. You know, just, you know, glorified walking path. You know, we're running right next to a creek. On the right side. That's the Indian Creek we're going up. So this trail does get a lot harder. There's a lot more scrambling and um, we'll see how it is with a kid on my back. Um, we've also in times past not walked on this trail and we've literally like just for fun climbed up the creek itself because there's all the big rocks that you can kind of hop along. So if you're wanting something a little bit more fun for the kids, they sometimes like to do that and climb the rocks and go up the creek bed itself. And we're actually going to follow that up most of the way. Um, there's an upper and lower trail. So we usually do the lower one. The upper one's pretty tall and right on the bluff line. So taking the kids on that isn't responsible, I don't think. So here's a crossing. You know, you can keep going up the creek or, you know, the trail just goes right across. So sometimes those are hard to find. So um, when in doubt, you can go up the creek. But it's definitely an easier hike along the the bank over there. It's a decent time to mention some footwear options. Like most of the time when we do this hike it's in the spring because we like to see the eye flow in a little bit. But this time it's it's fall, it's mid-November, and we're out here, so there's not a lot of water. I opted for just some nice hiking boots to keep my feet warm with some wool socks to keep them uh, dry and not sweaty. But also having, like, walking through the creek bed, you know, you're more likely to roll ankles with um, without boots. So in the spring, I usually opt for, like, Chacos or some Keens or something that's more waterproof. Cause yeah. You're certainly yeah. getting wet. What are, what are your tips, Isaac? Uh, yeah? Uh, a coat? Uh, Red coat? Uh, yeah. Uh, Someone to carry you? Uh, Those are great tips. Uh huh. Kelty pack? He's got some hot hands in his hand. Yeah, hot hands. He's probably plenty thirsty. Uh, <laughs> What's awesome, also awesome about this hike is like having the, the bluffs almost instantly. You know, you have something cool to. To look at with a bluff on that side. Thanks. Extra commentary by Isaac. 
and then we got the creek bed, and we're just kind of in this low spot. So, um, you know, we're not even. <laughs> Jeez, get 30 minutes in and already have a cool trail to walk on. Keep the little ones interested. No way. Timo just said we are a mile in. That's right. We're tracking it, so we've got a mile in, and it's beautiful. So there's the creek over there. Here's where we're hiking. Bluff. He went, mm. Good job. I didn't even fall. You didn't, did you? I balanced it when I was about to fall. So we're at this part of the trail where uh, our trail is quit switching back across the creek and we're definitely like in the creek. You can see the waterfall right there. Uh, up there where Timothy is is definitely the way to go unless you can traverse that or feel like getting wet but it's November so we're gonna try and avoid getting wet. Um, you gotta definitely be careful on this stuff. It is covered in moss and it is damp. So it's gonna make slick. So even though that's not a terrible decline right there like it's still definitely a trip potential now it's certainly pretty cool to see all the falls rolling we had a big rain yesterday or the day before and you know the water is moving like it usually is in the spring which is kind of cool but it's also making it a little harder hike for the little ones a little more treacherous um but it's awesome to see the falls <laughs> Um, we've made it a little ways in, found a really cool spot, but we're thinking that the kids and Emmy and I may head back because just trying to think of that, like, we don't want to go too far if for some reason we had to carry both kids out. Um, so we're going to let them in, venture on. We're going to play here for a while, have a snack, and probably just kind of slowly take our time back. See ya. Bye, have fun. Bye, Opal. You guys be safe going on. Take care of Mama and Isaac. No, you cannot get in there. Pretty slick spot right here. Man, that's cool. That's literally where we, right where we left the, the girls and, you know, that would have been, squeezing through that would have been pretty tough with the kids. Glad we had them turn around when we did. More falls. This is all just like slime to walk up. It's not that steep, it's not that hard, but it's so, so slippery. profile with a hand. <laughs> yeah, just shooting up. Counterbalance. Um, we're about an hour and a half in. Our uh, time was pretty slow, obviously with the kids and stuff, but then just slowed down because it's so slick, especially with Opal it's having some trouble with the um, big steps and slick steps. So the girls and kids are headed back and we plan on making quite a bit faster time. Timo's got his full weighed down rig to train for rucking. 1.75 miles in. So yeah, we got a little ways to go to the eye still. So we're at a little spot where there's a tree that goes over the creek and you can see a trail over there coming down. Um, 
I think that's where the upper part of this trail goes. We're gonna stay on the lower part for now and we might come back on the, the upper just to show you guys both sides. But um, we've done both. I always enjoy the lower. It's a little more scrambly. Um, but the upper, I mean, you have cool views and uh, if you like heights, it's certainly a little daring. So we just hit another another split and uh, next to some other travelers on the, the trail and we took the lower trail because we like to go up the creek bed here but it's certainly one of the main reasons I wanted to make this video is it taken us a couple times coming down here to figure it out over the years uh, what the best route is and the most fun so hopefully you'll be able to watch it and see you know, if you want to take the upper trail or lower trail and also just like find the trails so they're a little elusive so just hit the two mile mark we're hitting this uh cool canyon you know the bluffs are getting a little bigger on the sides and um, still seeing water from time to time but you know those waterfalls in the first half are pretty fun especially for november um, yeah once you kind of hit the end of this where we used to like just stop. And I'll show you all where it peels up. Um, and <laughs> you can actually enjoy the, the eye that way. Big old chunk of rock that fell down. That was fun to kind of traverse around. And, uh, if you're into that sort of thing, there's obviously pretty easy ways around. You could just go up there's the trail right there. And you, know, you can kind of walk around these pools. They're just filling up and big old November rain. So we were just talking about, uh, you know, how much more treacherous this <laughs> trail feels than in the past. And yeah, it's been several years since we did it, and you know, we had kids with us, and envisioning it through that lens is you know, different than when just Timothy and I have done it before. But uh, we were also talking about like dogs on the trail, and if a dog could do this, and uh, I thought it'd be a good time to say that dogs are not permitted on this trail anymore. I took an Australian Shepherd, I don't know, 10 years ago when we did this, and she did pretty good, but it was certainly like, it, it was no joke. She didn't need to be on this trail. So um, they're not permitted anyway. We've already seen a, a park ranger. So if you did have a dog, you know you're risking getting fined. Um, but yeah, I just thought it'd be a opportune moment to say, don't bring your dog down on this trail. Old wear out sign that says, don't go in the cave because of the bats, they're endangered. So a lot of these caves down here are not supposed to go into. That sign's been here since I ever started coming here. So we've never ventured into a cave. There's one up here on this bluff somewhere. But it's kind of challenging to get up to. And you're not supposed to get in, so don't. But we come into this big cavern. You know, it's, what do you think? 200 feet to the left, at least. At least. So it's a awesome sight coming down this with all the water running. It's just beautiful. So this is about the part where we gotta traverse uphill pretty steady. So there's usually a old rope or a piece of webbing hanging down, and use that at your own risk. But we've we've certainly had to before. Um, especially with less experienced people. So, Timothy's pure experience. So. That's all. He won't need anything. It's like an auditorium. Huge bus. That's actually where we're getting ready to go up to. And once we climb up onto the up here, we can actually pass right through that big pillar. It's kind of a outcrop you can see right there but we'll be looking down from in just a little bit all right so 
right here, we start going up, there's, try and get them some ropes hanging down right there, and a long one that you can kind of use to pull yourself up, but steep, steep climb. I think we're just kind of straight up here, and straight down, all that, maybe, there's a big cave. That's where we're headed. Right, there's all these ropes. Man, it's a little cabin. This is obviously from the top. I'm pretty sure this is the Highline Trail from where we're coming back out. That's what we'll go for. But, that's such an amazing feature. And we came from there and go right through this little cave pathway. Coming out on the other side, back to our trail. We're just shy of three miles. I think 2.8 miles, 2.85. So that's a good, if you're keeping track of your mileage, you know, you should. If you're around three miles, you should be past that opening. And um, we don't really remember, but feel pretty confident that it's less than one mile to the eye. Um, pretty sure, bed with you know trails kind of interwoven on each side. So as long as you're going up the creek, you're going the right way. Yeah, so right here the trail totally ended and you know we're just gonna be boulder hopping up to the eye. Alright, almost there. You can see the light shining through it. Right there. So almost there. Obviously made it up to the eye right there. Of course, the camera doesn't do any kind of justice, but we are total 3.02 miles in. So just after we came up that big hill, we made like two turns around the cavern and it popped up here. So. Up here at the top, there's some of the people we ran into earlier that are going back down. That's actually where we need to be up there, so we kind of missed the trail, but what was she calling this? The Devil's... Devil's Wash Basin or something? The Devil's... Wash Pan? The Devil's Bath? The Devil's Wash Pan? I don't know. Pretty cool. So, we'll obviously have to get back up there and... Uh, get down and we're gonna try and hit that high trail. It looks like they're all past it, but I think we're gonna try and take it back. Come back through the cavern. Forgot about this little guy coming up. So just hanging out here on the Eye of the Needle trail, I thought it'd be a good time to just like kind of say that we're wanting to um, put together more content like this, um, go on hikes and kind of give a play-by-play -play of what to expect and uh, where we are, you know, we've been down in this area for a long time, hiking and exploring and uh, just love it and want to share it with, with other people and make sure that they get the experience we do and, you know, we've made a lot of mistakes with where we've gone and ended up in wrong places and those are always fun adventures too, but, you know, if you only have a limited time and you really want to be in a certain spot, like, you know, it's really good to have a play-by-play, -play, so uh, we'll try to keep pumping out some good content. So. Thanks for watching. That's like straight on shot. It's like a 45 degree down. So it doesn't look that steep on the camera.